Okay, this is obviously a Husqvarna Viking Model 2000, a gorgeous machine born back in 1958. Now, before we go into this amazing machine, let's cover a little bit of the history of the Viking Husqvarna uh, sewing machine company. And as the camera comes out a little bit, you'll see a funny little guy. And for the purposes of sharing the history of this amazing company, this is going to be King, the King of Sweden, Gustavus II Adolphus. And he is the one that originally decreed a drilling and grinding plant for musket barrels to be based in Sweden. And that same factory later, uh, right around 1872, uh, produced the first Husqvarna Viking sewing machine. And it was about 60 years later that this particular model was born. And this model, again, is an amazing uh, machine. Let's say goodbye to King Adolphus here. Uh, this is an amazing machine that, again, was born back in the 1950s, specific, specifically 1958. And not only is it, is it a heavy-duty industrial strength machine, as you'll see in the various sew-offs, but it also, as we'll cover when we go through the machine, has a total of 19 stitches that are generated by uh, three or excuse me four various cams that come with this machine. So let's start on the bottom right hand side of this amazing machine right next to this royal crest that defines the Husqvarna Viking sewing machine company. You can clearly see it's made in Sweden and what does that mean? Well what that means is it has the best engineering of any machine that I've had the privilege of working with. I am extremely impressed with FOFs. I'm extremely impressed with uh, the Nietzsche's or the Necky machines and certainly impressed with the various Singer machines that we've sold on eBay as well. But I'll tell you one thing, there is something special about Swedish engineering and like the FOF machines, you've got that double tooth metal dry belt inside of this machine as well. Something you can't see right now, but let me tell you one thing, it makes all the difference when it comes to power. Okay, enough talk. Let me point some features out on this machine. And I'll also, before we jump into it, I, I very seldom, as you already know if you follow us, I very seldom show a foot control. But check this baby out. It also is embossed with that royal crest of the Husqvarna Viking Sewing Machine Company. It is what I would call uh, like a racing pedal, a speed control pedal. It allows you to get maximum output of the machine very rapidly, but it also gives you a huge amount of control in harnessing that one amps of power that comes from this machine. So I just wanted to show this. It's just an amazing pedal and so much fun and so easy to operate and control this machine. Okay, right here, if we start right above the Royal Crest, we've got a very simple button to depress if we want to drop the feed dogs. If we push it in, the feed dogs drop. If we push it up and let it pop back out, the feed dogs pop back up again. It's that simple. Right here we have stitch width control. Also, as you can see right now, we've got it set on uh, the number four, which has a variety, kind of a rainbow of colors on it. That's also a setting that you'll use if you're accessing one of those cam generated stitches. Otherwise, you can adjust it left or right uh, if you want to get uh, a wider uh, stitch uh, output as far as the various stitches that you can produce. You obviously will move it all the way to zero if you're sewing a straight stitch or if you're doing a buttonhole. This also has a buttonhole automatically generated as well that you can produce with this machine. Okay, moving right up, we obviously have a control center here for a variety of different things. This is going to be stitch length, and this Swedish engineered machine has a very wide uh, stitch length variation, anything from six stitches per inch all the way down to 30 stitches per inch. Also, you can see again we have a color coding where if we're going to be uh, sewing one of the stitches that's generated, and you can see it across the top here as well if the camera comes just slightly more wide, uh, you also would set it on that color coding in association with the stitch that you want to select. So for example, right here, these are stitches that will be generated by cam D. These are stitches right here that are generated by cam C, K, 
Cam B and Cam A. So obviously if you put that, uh, that particular cam in and you select uh, either yellow or blue in, in conjunction with that cam, that's that stitch that's going to be outputted. Also, this control also allows you to very easily sew in reverse by depressing this button and then when you release it, you very easily return to sewing forward again. You know, again, the, the Swedish people are just very smart when it comes to making the engineering not only spectacular, but also very, very easy to operate. Okay, again, moving just slightly to the left, this is going to be a control center for a variety of different things. Whenever you're selecting one of the stitches that's generated by one of those four cams, either cam A, B, C, or D, you're going to color orientate these knobs to the stitch that you want. So, for example, right now I have cam A in the back of it. So if I'm wanting to sew uh, this particular pattern, which is going to have kind of an interlaced rose pattern to it, kind of a heart pattern, we're actually going to demonstrate that later in one of these sew-offs. Then you'll obviously, in wanting to pick that, that blue pattern, you'll set this to blue. You'll also, as the camera kind of moves to the right with me, you'll set this to the blue region as well. And then you'll move this third dial that controls stitch width also back to the blue region. And we'll demonstrate this again when we actually do the sew-up, but I just want to assure you it is so easy to select a stitch with this machine. Okay, follow me back up again to this control center. And as I move the dial uh, this direction to the right, you can see right here we can also select a stretch stitch. If I click it again, we then have the option of a myriad of different stitches. Anything from this is where you'll set it for straight stitching, this is where you'll set it to do a zigzag, and also this is where you'll select it. You'll select as well if you're doing a buttonhole. If you click it one more time, you can also do a blind hem stitch as well. And then there is uh, an option to turn it a little bit further to release that cam from the machine. But again, don't fret any of these details. I'm simply sharing it because we love to go into uh, all the different features and the benefits of each machine. So these are also covered in great depth uh, in the manual as well. Now I had mentioned the, the stitch length variation on this machine. Let me show you an example of an applique, a gorgeous applique that we did on this Model 2000. Isn't that spectacular? It really is. And this is not drawn. All of these detailed uh, turns and concentric circles and just amazing turnability demonstrated in this applique are all sewn. And it gives you a good idea of that stitch length variation again. Anything from six stitches, six stitches per inch all the way down to 30 stitches per inch. And you can see that full representation throughout this applique. And uh, we also did some more applique detail type painting as well, just to really make that pop out nicely. Now, this is pretty spectacular, but again, the output and the quality of a machine really does dictate what even a novice sewer can do. And while you may not be able to generate one identical to this, you know what? With a machine of this caliber, a Viking 2000, you can certainly generate a very, very nice project because of the quality of this machine. Now, with any machine, we love to include uh, an owner's manual. This is obviously an original manual covering every aspect of this Viking 2000. And it has what Viking referred to back in the 1950s as a colormatic system. What that means, again, if the camera is able to kind of capture this at the same time, they made it, they wanted to make it so easy so that by simply, as I showed you already, setting those dials to the various colored stitches and then putting in the uh, associated cam, you could immediately select that stitch output and that decorative or that utility stitch that you want. So that's what they meant by the colormatic system. They really wanted to make it very easy to operate and fun to operate as well. So this is included uh, for the purpose of maximizing the machine. 
We also include an instruction manual for the purposes of allowing you to maintain the machine. Now when you get this Viking 2000, if you're the winner, don't even worry about that. We spent about 10 hours on this machine going through it inside and out, servicing it, conditioning it, conditioning it, and cleaning it so it is ready to go to work. But once that routine maintenance does come due, this instruction manual will guide you through the very simple steps of maintaining this machine at the optimal level that you'll receive in it. So a wonderful resource and I love the fact that it also is an original manual as well. So this will be along with the machine uh, for you to use. Okay, let's go back into this amazing Viking 2000 and what I want to do right now if the camera can kind of get uh, a, a shot that is about the span of the machine. I wanted to demonstrate a neat feature on this and I'm going to kind of rotate this machine as best as I can. It's got a huge bed on it so we may not be able to uh, uh, capture fully uh, this feature but I do want to demonstrate how easy it is to wind a bobbin from a standpoint of disengaging the clutch. Now on most machines you've got to go to the, the balance wheel and you've got to manually disengage that clutch. Even on the Franklin machine right now made by Domestic that we have listed as well, you've got to still flip that little metal tab on the side to disengage the clutch. With this Husqvarna Viking machine, you simply put on the bobbin. And again, it will be very hard for you to see right now in the video probably, but you'll be able to see it certainly in the pictures. Once you put that bobbin on the side, you obviously would come off the top with the, the string there's a simple uh, thread guide on the side and then you would wind your bobbin. But the neat thing, all we did was pop that on and if I step on the foot control right now, that's all it takes to disengage that needle so that you don't have any movement of the needle and you can see readily. Right now that bobbin is spinning, you're winding that bobbin, but at no point does that needle move. But if we want that needle to move, all I would do, and I won't actually do it right now because I do have the machine threaded, all I would do is simply take that bobbin off. And by simply sliding the bobbin off, as soon as you put material underneath that presser foot, as soon as you press on that foot control again, immediately that, uh, that uh, clutch is re-engaged and you're back to sewing regularly as you normally would. So I think that's such a great uh, feature makes it so easy to transition from winding a bobbin to immediately jumping into that project and uh, getting busy. So, okay, uh, let's go to the top of the machine and it'll be a little bit hard to see. I'll, I'll kind of rotate the machine just slightly forward. You can see right here we obviously have two spool uh, pins which right away tells you this Husqvarna Viking Model 2000 is obviously capable of doing dual needle sewing. And uh, as we come away from that uh, that uh, spool pin here on the left, that's our main feed for the machine, you can see this machine is also very simple to thread. So we move from right to left, we come through this rear thread guide right here, across the body of the machine, through this other thread guide, down through the tension control area, right through this tension spring, around this little guide, up to the arm, and then all the way down to the presser foot. Now let me tell you one thing, when it comes to clearance, the Swedish people are dead serious about it. I've got my finger all the way underneath that presser foot right now, and that's even before engaging what I would consider to be a modest hyperextension. You see the added clearance that we get by applying that hyperextension. So if you're looking to get this machine for some heavy duty quilting or other heavy grade material sewing, you've just got a ton of space underneath that uh, presser foot. And you know what, you'll see that demonstrated again and again and again as we do our various heavy duty sew offs. So you'll want to make sure you check those videos out as well. Also I want to show you uh, another amazing feature of this Model 2000. A lot of machines are heavy duty uh, that we, we have uh, presented on eBay. But this also has the added bonus of this huge bed as well. Now, when you're talking about workspace, this is absolutely maximum workspace. I'm going to reach over here and see if I can get a tape measure real quick and just show you 
the amount of workspace that you can count on if you get this machine. Uh, and actually, let me flip this because it'll be a lot easier, I think, for the camera to capture the end of the bed versus uh, over here by the controlling. So you can see basically from the far right of the bed to the end of the bed, you're talking about 15 inches of workspace. Now if you were dealing with, everybody loves the featherweights and I do as well, but if you were dealing with a featherweight, you would be ending right about here, right around the 12 inch mark. And that's with the featherweight bed down. So the added reach that you're getting with uh, this additional workspace, not to mention the width of the workspace as well. I mean, from front to back, if I just roughly measure it, you're looking at about nine inches. You've also got a lot of vertical clearance as well in the harp area. So the ultimate outcome of all this is you have a dream machine when it comes to quilting or whenever you're looking to have that ability to really spread that project out and really have a lot of turn space. Now, if that isn't enough to get you excited about this spectacular Swedish machine, and you'll see this represented in the pictures as well, we're gonna be including an original Husqvarna Viking uh, storage uh, container as well. It's gonna house all the various feet that you'll see displayed in the photos. Also, it's gonna have uh, the additional cams as well, along with some additional attachments uh, to, to really just nicely compartmentalize all of that so you've got it nicely contained. Now that's not the end of it as well. We're also going to be including an original case, which is a little bit hard, I'm sure, for the camera to capture. But you'll see this in the photographs as well with the original keys. So this is a complete package when it comes to a listing that contains everything you'll need to just fall in love with sewing or to fall in love with sewing again. So make sure you check out the other videos as well where you see this amazing Viking 2000 go to work.